Hello and welcome to my video review of the Xbox 360 version of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Unsurprisingly, the game follows the story of the book slash movie with extra bits tacked on. Progress is made through exploration, leading to scenes rendered with the in-game engine and minigames. For those uninformed, the story goes that Harry is returning for his next year at Hogwarts. The wizard world is on high alert after the whole Ministry incident from the last film. Harry begins to think something is happening behind the scenes at Hogwarts, particularly with his arch-nemesis Malfoy and the ever so slimy Snape. Evening, Dumbledore is now giving Harry private lessons where they look into Voldemort's past as Tom Riddle, while Hermione and Ron are as usual in their cat and dog night. love-hate relationship. Oh, honestly, Ron. It's not, my fault. not that you really take any part in this. It's Most of the game it's something on screen and you watch. About a quarter of the game is like that. The game has a horrible tendency to skip parts of the story too, making it feel like you're watching a slideshow, sometimes in reverse. Oh look, Hogsmeade! Two people fighting and shouting. There's a necklace. It's obviously cursed. Where the necklace came from, who's fighting, why it's cursed? You only find this out sometime after the scene has actually transpired. It must be cursed. For the majority of the game, you'll be playing as Harry, rendered in-game like his on-screen counterpart, Daniel Radcliffe. The model, while sometimes a little stiff in animation, is pretty much identical to him. The only complaint I can make about the model is the lightness of the scar. It's so small, thin and light that often it could be mistaken for simply another hair on his fringe. On a couple of occasions, you'll get to control another character. Ron, while infatuated after consuming the chocolate containing love potion, and his sister, Ginny, when she has to play Seeker in the Quidditch Cup final. The action takes place 95% of the time within the Hogwarts grounds. The castle is big and incredibly detailed, my only gripe with it being that the portraits are not animated while you're passing by, and the camera angle at times, for example, in spiral staircases. Scattered around the castle are Hogwarts emblems for unlockables and hundreds of objects which you can shake out mini crests from, adding up to a larger crest in time. It would be easy to get lost, but fortunately, nearly headless Nick acts as a guide on demand to your next destination, phasing through walls and taking all the shortcuts along the way. One of the two times you're outside of Hogwarts is a cutscene, if you can really call it that, and the other time is a random cave, which you don't really see much of, being that it's dark and you're staring at water and some skeletons for the majority of it. The first of the core minigames you'll get to play is Quidditch, flying around the burrow. The minigame itself consists of flying through checkpoints as the broom travels on rails. It's well executed and has a good sense of speed as you rush across the Quidditch pitch through loops, between stands and knocking against the opposition sneaker in a tight channel of the stadium. But it begins to get very boring after the first three times or so, especially when the match tends to drag out. Then there's Duel Link, which consists of circling your opponent with the left analogue and casting one of five spells with the right analogue and something else. Dodges to the left and right are controlled with the left and right triggers respectively. This could have been fun or interesting if they weren't so frequent and so easy. Defeating the champion of one of the many dueling clubs or a boss is simply a matter of knocking down the opponent with Expelle Armour and spamming Stupefy in their face. These same tactics can be applied to just about any duel you'll play in the entire game. There are a few puzzles to solve, utilising the charm spells such as Wingardium Leviosa and Reparo. As far as story purposes go, you will only need to use them a few times. They do come into play more so when gathering emblems, however. By far, the best minigame of them all, however, is the potion mixing one. It's simple in essence. Follow the instructions by selecting the right reagent and add the correct amount to result in a colour change. But the soupy contents of the cauldron look great, the colour change can be very precise, and the pace can get very frantic as this is all against the clock and every mistake results in a time penalty. There are a range of actions thrown in to make it more interesting, such as heating, stirring and shaking bottles. I wish my practical chemistry experiments were this interesting. Graphically, the game is nice. Student models are varied, faces are detailed for the lead cast if a little robotic, although not all of them have come through so great on the transition to video game. Sounds are good with an authentic potterish soundtrack, exceeding expectations. Voice acting is simply passable, with very few of the actors providing sounds for the characters of their likeness. Outside of the story and minigames, the only other thing is two-player dueling. This is an Xbox Live enabled, which is a shame, as dueling is considerably more interesting against a human opponent, even if it is just a race to see who messes up first. In conclusion, while the game exceeds my expectations as a movie game, being that it's playable and fun, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince is flawed. 
The story has been condensed horribly. Too much of the game is watching and not playing. It's way too easy with no option to change it. It's very repetitive and it's unacceptably short. Despite this, it looks nice and the castle is packed with charm. It sounds great. The mini games can be incredibly fun and it will feed your Potter addiction for a measly three to four hours or more if you're interested in collecting. Overall, I give the game a 60% score and a rental rating. The main story lasts about three to four hours. Completing all the mini games takes a further one to two hours and collecting emblems another three to four hours at most. Two player duels are fun, but they're not online. Thanks for listening, this is Metal Dragon with my video review of the Xbox 360 version of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince.